Alright, what's going on you guys? It's your boy 3 Stiggity in this thing, baby, representing TKOG. Today I'm coming at you guys with some sweet treats. Uh, I'm probably gonna want to do like a Halloween theme. When Halloween comes around, I'm probably gonna do another sweet treat. Um, I don't know, I gotta find something crazy to mix with Madochi so I could really do like a Halloween theme deck. But yeah, we've got sweet treats again. Uh, this deck, honestly, it, this deck is like low-key, very, very powerful. Like, it's low-key because people don't take it seriously you know a lot of people there's like decks like this that are very powerful but their ceiling is low and i'll explain this a little bit more really fast before i get into my my whole spill with the intro and the profile the ceiling's low because even though it has high offensive capabilities it has um obviously defensive mitigation like the sense that it can chunk block a lot so it can mitigate a lot of damage and only it be coming its way because it puts up such a big wall it has a cool recursive loop with its resources it's rather consistent and um it does set up some really really decent boards that can carry you over into your next turn and that's all you need this day and age is uh back up off of that it's something that will carry you into your next turn so that um you can otk on the follow-up the issue with the ceiling is because this deck is not going to play through two disruptions right like, let's say your opponent has an Ash and an Imperm. You really just... It's really hard. Like, I'll explain the scenario. So, like, let's say I opened um, Angeli, Magellan, and Talon. So, like, I summon Angeli. They Ash me because I tribute her for cost, right? Let's just say that. It doesn't matter what order you put it in. Ash is going to get one. Imperm is going to negate the other. So, like, use Talon for your extra normal summon. You summon the second Madoche. They Imperm you. You literally cannot play through that. Like, the only way you would even be able to play through that is if you were under Dimension Shifter and you drew a Pedicessor. So, like, you really consistently, you cannot play through two hand traps. And I think that is a big flaw. Oftentimes, you normally can't play through one. You have to draw rather well. Because you not only have to draw Salon, but you have to draw another one of your nine starters. Which, nine sounds like a lot on pen and paper, but you have a higher probability of drawing one than you do of drawing two. So, the deck ceiling is rather low but its potential is very very um i would say untapped it has a lot that it can do with very little it doesn't really need a lot of resources to go off so in theory it sounds good because it's a one card combo deck you get so much out of that one card you could play so many hand traps and defensive cards but the issue is you can't play through as much as other decks um i will say it's kind of similar with prank kids but prank kids can play more extenders than madoches can unfortunately because there's not a lot of generic cards that can assist you. I mean, heck, we used to play Brilliant Fusion and Madolches for one of those reasons. But I just wanted to share that. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. If you wanted to support my channel in any way, shape, or form, you can become a member of my Patreon. Uh, tier 1's 3 bucks. Tier 2's 10 bucks. Tier 3's 15 bucks. It's a monthly thing. I give back to those who give to me. You're not just going to be donating just like a, hey, thank you, Sax. I appreciate you. Like, I really do take time out of my day. To make sure that people feel that it's worth it when they do it and you can also join my discord if you just want to become a member of that community do it bro it's i wouldn't i wouldn't regret it honestly like it's just something that you should do even if you're not gonna um do anything else because the discord is a free and b there's a lot of people in there that can help you get be get better at the game and if you just need friends to play with uh there's people in there that'll duel you you know so let's get into the list so for defensive cards i'm rocking a lot bro like I went in this time. I'm rocking three nibs, three shifters, three ash, three imperm, and three droplets. I'm literally playing 15 defensive cards in a 40 card deck. So I'm not playing around with this. Um, I know that there's a little trend with Herald of the Orange Light. People are playing that. I'm going to share my thoughts on that right now. These are the targets you have for Orange Light. So you have one plus these three, that's four, plus these, that's seven. So with the Orange Lights, you have 10. You want to do some theory real quick? I'm not even going to go deep into the probability and statistics, like the math ratios. I'll just put it like this. If you have 10 cards in your deck, in order for Orange Light to work properly, you have to draw two of those 10 every time you see one Orange Light. So in my mind, I just feel like it's not worth it because there are, are higher chances of you drawing Orange Light by itself than not actually drawing another Midoche. It's a really cool hand trap. It really is. And I'm not saying it's bad, but I feel like I'd rather play a card that's doesn't require for me to draw another specific card for it to be good if that makes sense i can draw any of these by themselves and they will work just fine but if i draw orange light i have to a trade a starter that i normally would want to keep and b neck two 
and I still have to play the RNG game, you know, so it's just not worth it to me, but I'm not going to say it's a bad card. I'm not saying that. I'm just explaining why I don't play it because I'm sure people are going to say, why aren't you playing that? And that's why. I feel like these have the highest impact. Um, the only thing that I probably would change is I would like to play talents in this deck, but here's my issue with talents. If I play talents and I draw two, what can I really draw into? You know, like I would literally have to draw like either this or this. That's the only way talents would be valuable. So even I have some conflicting issues with that. So I feel like test the cards for yourself, see how they work. But it's like because there's only six cards that you could draw with the talents that would be good. And that chance is not as high as, you know, just like other decks because like in other decks you can talents and there's like so many cards you could draw that it's worth it for me it just comes down to like is talents really going to play through a hand trap and because the percentage is so low that's another reason why i don't play that card so i figured i'd share that because in case you guys were wondering that's why so i have my obviously my own reasons and i'm a theory crafter i'm a big testing kind of guy so a lot of times when you guys hear me saying i play this for this reason and i don't play this for this reason it's because i've already tested it so my opinion is biased in the sense that i'm speaking from my personal experience so yours might be different and you might like the cards more than i do but these are my 15 defensive hand traps of choice droplet is just in, it's it's for security because uh when you droplets especially against drytrons you can actually break their whole board and then you can use glass souffle to shuffle back their drytron monsters and put them back to square one so you put their herald back you put all their good boss monsters back and then you glass souffle them Put their drytrons back and they're literally starting all over it's like as if the duel has just started all over again because they have to re-establish their entire board and get all the resources back flowing into their grave but it's going to be a little bit difficult to do when they already have burned through their benton and uh you know you put the ritual spell back too so it's it's pretty cool um i'm sorry not the ritual spell you put back the uh the drytrons back so i feel like it's really cool honestly it's just it's dope like glass souffle um Something else that a friend of mine shared that I think it's pretty cool um, um, is, uh, so what hand traps exactly would I be using that I could use it? I think in my list, I can't do it as often, but if I was playing more um, hand traps that actually do go to the grave, then it'd be even more beneficial. But somebody shared something with me, this really cool loop with the Medolces, where you can actually recycle your hand traps back into your hand. So you can actually dimensional shifter your opponent, and since this guy's the only guy in your grave, you could actually like set up a really cool way where you could really add them back to your hand if you wanted to, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I just like it. D shifter is just freaking dope, and Ash is obviously freaking dope. Um, but yeah, I just really wanted to point that out too because I'm getting in into the meat, like the the bread and butter of the deck. But I'm explaining the defensive cards. Um, I think the biggest thing with Droplets is like I was saying, like against Drytrons, the fact that you can literally reset their whole board. You could even recycle. They're a ritual spell if you really want to. You could just shuffle back whatever you wanted to, but more often than not, because you're only going for two cards, I would pick two Drytron names over the ritual spell. So normally you're leaving that, unless you're able to combo off without Souffle and just drop her on your turn and on your opponent's turn shuffle four. But you normally need her for your effects on your turn to actually combo off, and then you use her in your opponent's draw phase to get rid of their Drytron. So really awesome. I like playing Droplet. Um, you could play Dark Ruler, but Droplet's utility as a going first card, I feel, is valuable. And also as a going second card, um, because it can help you to dodge cards like Effect Veiler, Imperm, and your opponent's own Droplets. That's why I think this is still going to take the cake when it comes to this versus Dark Ruler. Because even if I was just like um, going for like a standard combo, the fact that Magdalene will resolve by me chaining Droplets, sitting her off the field to dodge the Veiler or the um, Imperm, it's pretty darn cool. So then at that point, my Magellene would just search the Hoot Cake and the Hoot Cake would banish the Magellene that I sent for cost off droplets. You know what I mean? Like there's some cool tricks and there's some cool utility with this card. I just value it. But those are the 15 defensive cards. Um, now for starters, we're playing three prosperity. Um, the extra deck is very free. Normally, I would say like, I don't like playing games without three of these. I could afford to play with just one. The other thing is like everything that's Medolce is recyclable so in theory you really don't need extra copies of like anything you maybe want to play with two of each minimum just because sometimes you need to summon multiple in the same turn but all these can be recycled back into your extra deck believe it or not so Medolce's actually have an infinite grind game they cannot be decked out because they put all of their cards back into their deck so you just really 
you don't have to worry about the issues with ratios and stuff prosperity is just a given it's so free uh and then more starters we have three magiline three angeli three hood cake and also three predecessor so hood cake is a starter only if um you open shifter or um ash blossom because those are going to be the monsters that you could put in your grave going second going first he's not as much of a starter but the thing is i'd rather have a higher probability of drawing a starter than diminish that even by a small percentile because consistency is key and you really need to draw multiple starters with the salon if you want to if you even think you're going to play through a single hand trap you've got to draw at least two starters and you've got to draw a salon the only time who cake really sucks is like uh with the salon thing when i'm referencing what i said earlier about ash and imperm like when you have like Magdalene and like Who Cake, you really can't do anything, you know, to play through Ash or Imperm. Like you just can't play through both. But if you have Angeli plus Hoot Cake, you know, like Angeli's gonna actually put herself in grave for the Who Cake. So if like they Ash her, you can just Salon summon Who Cake, you know, Imperm. Like you, uh, if they Imperm it, it kind of sucks because Who Cake doesn't banish for cost. That's another issue. If Who Cake banished for cost, it'd be a little bit better because then if they Impermed it. You could just summon predecessor from your hand if you had it, you know, but it just it is what it is Um, so technically speaking you are playing 12 one card starters just three of them are situational uh, And then I do like playing two Mesa Delato. I find a higher comfortability playing two Um, you can absolutely get away with one But I have also found situations where I actually do need the second one and it really does come up and honestly the cards just super important It's a huge part of your setup. Uh, you want to get access to two of these two of the three either chateau uh more than not i go for chateau just because it, it just enables the combo so much easier especially when you don't have shifter um so you're either gonna go for chateau plus ticket or you'll go like salon plus um ticket but chateau a lot of times is one of the main ones you go for because also it gives you that buff and this is also part of the loot so if a monster in your graveyard would be returned to the deck by the effect of Mendoche, you can add it to your hand that's why a lot of the time you're gonna go for this because it's also part of that hand trap loop so in theory you can infinitely dimensional shifter your opponent because you can actually add the dimensional shifter from your grave back to your hand which is super duper nutty i like it a lot um yeah it's just amazing and honestly you just can't pass up on that like dude it's it's crazy um so you're normally going to be um going for chateau and then you'll just pick whichever one you normally never search promenade off of Mesa Gelato because I prefer getting Salon first and then just using Salon to set it. And then you have that really nasty loop because promenade actually just keeps getting recycled. You have a consistent negate that also gives you a follow-up at the same time. Really, really nasty. And then the one pudding says, so my side deck's not being showed, but I will spoil one card. I side deck Medoche Knights as a monster negate, and it makes pudding says nasty because you guys, you can summon Pedicessor on your opponent's turn off ticket trigger her effect to summon pudding cess and then you can activate medolce's knight negate a monster effect and you rip a card so medolce's knight is obviously nasty when you have pudding cess up so just pointing out that you can set up a really cool combo going first with a two negates plus like a rip which is doesn't seem like a lot but you back that up with your graveyard recursion um your recyclable hand traps and your disruption from the graveyard with souffle and the huge wall that you set up of cards that are really hard to kill it's a pretty nasty deck uh, and then we're playing three salon it's the only really extender that's that's going to help you to play out of almost every situation putting cess i mean petting cess to an extent but sometimes you actually do have a monster in your grave so it just sucks that who's cake doesn't banish for cost honestly uh and then you know we already talked about ticket and chateau ticket is nasty you guys ticket is so gross this is one of the hugest things about your snowballing factor with this deck this deck does have a big snowballing factor um everything about this deck it's just like first turn setup and everything you do after your first turn is just nuts it's like when salmon greats get all their monsters in their grave it's like every turn just seems so broken because your next turn you're playing with like so many resources you can't even use them all it's just that crazy like ticket is amazing you guys and then promenade negate and a follow-up like oh my goodness you can even add from your grave which is nasty you guys like this card's so good it's a great addition to the deck it really put this deck in a it, in my opinion it solidified it as a tier two they, this deck cannot be any lower than tier two it could be tier 1.5 in certain formats medoche otk like going second medoches are better but right now i think you want to go first you really do even though going second you have like 
15 hand traps and blowout cards that you could draw, you still want to go first because you draw any of these going first with your standard inboard, it's super gross. Like, it's hard to break. Then we're playing uh, two, two copies of Chocolate a la Mode. We are playing three copies of Tiramisu. If you guys have not tasted this cake in real life, it is the Bombay. Tiramisu is actually fire. No wonder why she's the queen. Glass Souffle, three copies. These cards right here, like Souffle and Tiramisu, are your bread and butter. Honestly, all of these, like, these are like, a lot of the times, these are the only cards that you make. Something that I have thought about that has um, came up is like Zeus. So I'm still thinking about it because it doesn't come up like literally like 100% of the time. But I feel like you can get away with playing Zeus. I mean, the only thing that really locks you into Madoche is this pet. And also just because you leave XYZs on the field sometimes, it's not a bad idea. Especially when Souffle can protect herself or any XYZ you need to. It's not a bad idea. Um, it's just the thing is like, even though Zeus comes up, it's like, Tiramisu's just honestly, I know it sounds crazy. She's just so much better. Like she's just so much better at clearing fields. You just you just she just does it better. Because she clears the field and then you go in for the damage. But Zeus is an option, I'm just saying. Uh fresh this start. This card makes your board so annoying to kill. Because as your opponent's trying to kill you, what happens with Sis Start is like your cards try to die. You trigger Chateau, you trigger Ticket. If you have all three of these, it's broken. Salon sets a promenade, you activate the second promenade, you get the negate. Ticket summons, uh, you add. Chateau recycles your stuff. You can literally plus three to four just off your opponent trying to break your board because of Sistar. This card is actually disgusting, you guys. This card is disgusting. Uh, then we have Dweller Baguska. You can actually, there's a snappy combo. Like if you're trying to do a bare minimum, like let's say you're playing conservative. I'm a pretty conservative player at times. If this is a smart thing to do, like you have a decent setup, you know you have a follow up, and you're just like, man, there's just way too many hand traps that this person could be playing, or he has a Nibiru, this, that, and the third. You could just go normal summon Magdalene, add pet, special pet, no effect, overlaying the Baguska, pass with your defensive cards, and uh, if, especially when you have a Who Cake, it's perfect because Baguska detaches. You can just actually do your normal combo on your follow up. So that's going to buy you a turn, and also because you already have a little bit more damage on field, it'll make it easier to OTK. So, I like Baguska, and I like Dweller. Um, you can play under Nibiru and still win games just by making these guys. So, I like the snappy little instant rank 4 that you can get just off of Magellan. Uh, and then, do we just have a small access code um, package? It does come up, and it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So, that is actually going to wrap up my Madolce deck. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I will be doing some duels right now. I'm just um, showcasing lists, and I'm going to get some duels IRL and online. I'm um, just trying to make up for, you know, all the um, the lack of consistency and content production for you guys lately. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this. God bless you. Make good choices. Don't hurt your brain. So stay tuned for future content and deuces as wild, yo.